Lynn Hiles Ministries presents Dr. Lynn Hiles, That You Might Have Life. And here's your host, Dr. Lynn Hiles. Welcome back to the program again today, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm really excited uh, for the next couple of weeks to be sharing with you a very good friend of mine. that We've become great friends over the last couple of years and uh, as you look around and you see the background, you notice that it's probably not our normal TV studio. That's because we are on location in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex at Calvary Church. And uh, I have on the set with me today, Pastor Ben Daly, who is the lead pastor of Calvary Church here in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Let me just tell you a little bit about him. He's the lead pastor of Calvary Church. It's a multi-locational church. There's campuses, all, uh, locations, not only in Dallas, but in Georgia and North Carolina, different places. And we will put a link up on the screen where you can get information from them. But it's a church. His, the main church is based here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, and we are on location there right now. But uh, Pastor Ben is known for uh, his love for the gospel his creative style of communication and non-conventional ministry. He oversees one of the most culturally diverse congregations in the nation. His unique ministry approach paired with his love for people have produced an atmosphere for heart transformation. Ben and his wife Kim have been married for 27 years. They have three children, Kyla and Marcy, son-in-law and Kate, who also serve at Calvary Church. And it is great to have you on set. It's a great honor to have you here today. Wow, thank and, you. Uh, you know, thank uh, you. You know, just to give a little bit of a background uh, uh, that for those who didn't see last week's program, and let me just say this. If you missed last week's program, <laughs> you owe it to yourself to go back and watch it on YouTube or listen to the RSS feed or the podcast because the audio portions of this, I think it will help you encourage your pastor to tune in here some because I think you're going to get some encouraging things, uh, not only from last week, but the weeks that come as we share the gospel a little bit with you. But to just give you a little bit of the story, then I'm going to let uh, Pastor Ben tell you his story. I was kind of discouraged when I first met Pastor Ben, and I had been 40 years full-time traveling ministry wow. and sometimes you get weary man you know and you you serve and you 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 know a lot of times even with tv you think well there'll be just bukus of people that write to you but what's crazy is people that hate you have a hair trigger on their writing finger but <laughs> you know the people that love you never let you know they just figure everybody else is telling you yeah, yeah. but i was discouraged and the lord spoke to me to go to uh, you know a conference in oklahoma city where bishop tony miller was pastor wow wow a great man of god as well who passed last year and greatly missed but I went to this conference, and I really was contemplating retiring. I'm thinking, you know what? It's, I've been on the road a long time, and you know things had begun to change so much that I thought, maybe I'm a dinosaur. Maybe it's time for me to just quit. You know? But I got a lot of prophecies about you know, that, that the Lord spoke to me, and he said, when I went to that meeting, he said to me, this is your 40th year of ministry, and I'm going to use you to bring the next generation wow. to the fullness of what it means to live in the promised land. Wow. 40 years is over. I believe we're in one of the greatest reformations of human history right now. It's, this is bigger than revival, Pastor Ben. Wow. And uh, when the Lord spoke that to me, I went and I, I was at was, you know, such a large conference, but you didn't even know I was in the room. Pastors there from all over the world, big conference. I've sat beside of Paul Brownback, a good friend of ours here also in the uh, North uh, Fort Worth area, the Abbey Church. And I leaned over when you were preaching. I, I could see, man, the refreshing coming over these leaders as, they, as these tired, weary, worn-out preachers were hearing you preach a gospel that was setting them free. Wow. And I leaned over and told Pastor Paul, I said, this guy's saying something. And he said, well, he wants to meet you. You know, he said he's, uh, you know, he's, he's listened to some of your material. And so I figured you probably wouldn't even know who I was. But as soon as I walked up, you... Pushed everybody out of the road, said, dude, before I even shake your hand, man, I got to tell you, save my life, save my ministry. And you allowed me to write the forward to this great yes. book, Crap Captured by Grace. But tell me a little bit about your story. We're going to talk about these books and show you how to get them. And, uh, you know, he, he has several books. He has one called Glide. He has one called Limitless. But we're going to talk about Captured by Grace more than anything. But just share a little bit more about your story for the people that missed last week and some of the things that you'd like to share as we get it. Ready to share some things. Well, again, I just want to say to you how grateful I am to the Lord um, for you in my life. You know, when I came, I shared it last week when I talked about my book, Collide. 
uh, when your desires meet God's heart. And I talked about my collision and uh, when that happened in my life. And really, I came into, you know, that my collision was my innate desire to impress God with my goodness for so many years collided with God. He wanted to impress me with his goodness. And I came into, really, I didn't know what it was, but I guess it was a revelation of this new covenant. Yeah. And the new covenant really is a new language. you got to learn the new sentence structure uh, of this language. Yeah. Uh, because I'd, I'd, I'd been living the old way for so long, and it wore me out. And, uh, and I remember uh, someone saying to me, have you heard of this guy? You know, he's uh, on television. He's written a bunch of books. I got his books, and I watched him on uh, you know, the resources that you put on, I guess, uh, social media. And, um, man, I tell you, you were a distant mentor to me for many, many years. You know, I did a series recently called Redefined, Redefining, things like success. True success is faithfulness. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Yes, sir. You, you are a success because you have been faithful to what God's called you to. God gave you a message, wasn't popular. Yeah. But he gave you a message and you stuck faithful to yes, that I thing. Yes, I did. And uh, because of that, I don't think you realize, I really don't, I don't think you realize, you're going to know someday, but I don't think you realize the number of pastors and leaders and people that uh, you have impacted and really brought into their promised land. And it's not yeah. a piece of real estate. Yeah. It's a person. Yeah. You brought them into their place of promise, a revelation of everything available to them in Christ Jesus. And uh, I am so grateful for that. You know, uh, one of the first things that happened to us uh, when I came into this, you know, here I am pastoring. I come to the end. I wrote my resignation. And when I did, God said, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> he said. He said, "Thank you for finally taking your grip off of something that was never yours in the first place. It's not your church; it's mine." And uh, I tell you, I started for the first time enjoying my life, yeah. enjoying my marriage, enjoying my children, enjoying my relationships, <clears throat> enjoying what God called me to do. You know, for so long I was doing it for Him. I just didn't know what He'd done for me. Yeah, and well, that's powerful. Uh, you know, I, I. I I, uh, I, I, knew, I knew how to do, but I didn't know what was already done for yeah. me, you know. And I think the church really, really believes that God can do anything. I'm just not sure we're convinced he's done very much. Yeah. And so things begin to change for me. And, um, man, in those, in those early months and years of, of coming into this and literally having to grow up in many ways in, in front of a church. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful for the church I pastor. I told them today, I'm in a series right now called Mature Audiences Only. And I told many of the people, thank you for being willing to watch me grow up. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been a part of this church now for over 28 years. And uh, they've watched me grow up. In many ways, grow up in Christ. Yeah. Grow, grow up in the gospel. Yeah. Uh, and I've had to do it in front of them. I think there's a reason why Paul had to disappear for so many years. <laughs> and get out of the way and uh, deal with some stuff before he came back with a message. I had to do it in front of people. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, in those, in, those, in those early days of coming in, I, I, I didn't know what to call it. I just called a group of people. I said, let's circle up and talk about this gospel. Well, now they're called gospel circles. Yeah. And they're in cities everywhere. Yeah. But when they first started, it was one group of, of people that just, is this real? Is it really this good? Is the good is the gospel? Is the good news really this good? I can't believe it. Yep. Where's this been all my life? It, it was like we were hiding. You, know? you almost hit hit out in a it, room it, somewhere. Yeah, you know? oh, we had to hide Dealing out contraband. Room. Yeah, and and we talk about truths and and uh, and and I have to say some of your books. You know, we we get in there and go. This can't be this. This can't be this good. You know, and but God used uh, you in a tremendous way. And now I think about how you've impacted my life and now impacting not just a church, but a family of churches and a network of churches. That's how God's used you. 
And, and I don't think, uh, you know, as leaders, we, we don't hear it enough. You know, we, sometimes we wonder, is anybody getting it? <laughs> if you have been blessed by this ministry, you need to let this man know. You need to tell him. We're so grateful that we get to stand on his broad shoulders and continue to preach this gospel. And uh, God's, God's used you in a significant way, but I believe he's using you in an even greater way now because now it's, uh, it's really more about uh, releasing what you have now to people who can carry it. Yeah, It's not just throwing it out there for just anybody. It's really now given the precious thing that you've carried to people who are going to carry it. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's the time we're in. But, uh, but I just want to thank you and, um, and, and honor you and, and tell you that, uh, uh, man, I've had the great privilege. I could talk about so many wonderful things we've done here at Calvary, but my major wins, man, are uh, uh, my, my marriage to my wife, Kim. We've been married now uh, 28 years, been together over 30. Uh, I, I dated her. I married my high school sweetheart, and then my children, and to watch my kids um, in in ministry together. Yeah. You know, my my daughter and my son in love, and my son uh, who's here behind the cameras with this team. And and uh, I got a I got a miracle a few months ago where he got engaged to a beautiful girl in the church. So now I got a new daughter in love, and to see. I get to do this. I get to live, man. I, I get to see now generations yeah. come into. Th- I tell you, I, I can't tell you what it means to know that now my kids are going to have to carry what I carry. Think about that. The weight that I was up under. You know, I remember you telling, telling me that. Boy, what a joy it is. One night you sitting there on the porch holding a grandkid. Thought, my kids never have to know what I. They will know, never know the whips and chains of an Egyptian system of slavery. Oh, they're going to only know the, the bondage f- of servitude yeah. instead of sonship. That's yeah. what we get to do. Yeah. And uh, so I tell you, my greatest joy, my marriage, my, my family, this, 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 this ministry, but most of all, man, my personal grace walk. And grace, grace is not a doctrine. My God, grace is not a theology. Grace, grace is not a tweet. It's not a conference. You not know, the latest you know, buzzword. No, it's not the latest <clears throat> buzzword. Grace is a person. Jesus is grace. Grace is Jesus. He came uh, full of grace. And, yeah. and grace is the truth. Yeah. And the truth is grace. Yeah. And uh, so, so really, man, my personal walk with Jesus, man, those have been just the great wins on this journey. And uh, I, I, I agree with you. Yes, for a whole lot of us, these are confusing times. But as you said, well, if we can believe this church, these are glorious times. Yeah. These are glorious times. And I've never been more convinced we have the message. In a world full of bad news and bad opinions and bad advice, let me tell you something. Man, we've got good news. Good news. Yes, sir. And uh, so anyway, that's a little bit about me. Well, you know, I think that even as, like you said, we have got the good news, but, you know, the, 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 we're, we're all called. To Every be a priesthood, you know, after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. And, uh, you know, the word consecrate, you know, when they would consecrate a priest throughout the scripture, they would consecrate one. But the word consecrate literally means to fill the hands, put something in their hands. And what we put in the hands of a chosen generation and a royal priesthood is the bread and wine of the new covenant. Oh, We've got to equip leaders, and that's one of the things that you do, of course, even with the Gospel Circle Fellowship of Churches, is we put bread and wine in their hands. Because he said, I'm going to bless your bread, and I'm going to bless your water, and I'm going to remove sickness from among you whenever he brought them out of Egypt. But the bread was the manna that fell from heaven, and in the New Testament, Jesus said, I'm the true bread. And the water they drank came from the smitten rock. And when we feed, when we go back to the simplicity of the Gospel, then that's what really begins to transform. We can preach everything from politics to whatever you want, you know. I mean, there's more, you know, conspiracy theories out there. We're halted between opinions everywhere. 
But the truth of it is we need to get back to focusing on preaching the gospel that changes people. So with that said, I want to ask you, because we're going to lead into this a little bit, but why did you write this book, uh, Captured by Grace? Tell me a little bit about, this is 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 your Captured by Grace. You got one there, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, last week you let me talk about Collide. You let me talk about uh, my book, uh, Limitless. And uh, I tell you, this book is special to me because you wrote the foreword. Yes, I did. (laughs) And uh, I never knew, I never knew that uh, following you years later that this man would, uh, you know, write the foreword for my book. But uh, in this book, Captured by Grace, Be Freed from Fear, This is the message for right now. Be freed from fear so you can really live. And in this book, let me set it up for you real quick. Uh, In in this book, chapter one of of this book, um, I have that chapter titled, The War is Over. Mm -hmm. And in this book, I, I tell this true story. I know you've heard it, but I'm going to tell I've read it. your book. That's how yeah. I know. Yeah, go ahead. When, when World War II came to an end, uh, it was a time of great joy and celebration. As a matter of fact, uh, proverbial swords were beaten into plowshares, and, and prisoners were set free, and soldiers went home to their, to their families. What a time. But one man by the name of Second Lieutenant Onada... Uh, of the Imperial Japanese Army, he chose not to believe uh, the broadcast announcing uh, the end of the war. The war's over. Good news. The war's over. Listen to this. For 29 years, think about that. Lieutenant Onada hid in the jungles of the Philippines, refusing to come home. Well, knowing he was still out there, uh, the authorities tried to reach him with the good news, uh, the war's over. However, um, Onada dismissed flyers left by islanders as nothing but uh, enemy propaganda, and he considered letters and family photos and newspapers that were dropped from planes as, you know, nothing more than a trick. It's fake news. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh And then in 1974, as I studied this story, 1974, a college student, a Japanese college college student, actually made it his quest to track down this this old holdout who'd been there for nearly 30 years. And after trekking through the, the jungle, the student found the old soldier, befriended him, but he could not convince him to surrender. The war's over. You can go home, enjoy your life. (laughs) It's done. He could not convince him. Well, eventually, the Japanese government actually sent Onada's former commanding officer into the jungle with now orders for him to stand down. So finally, relieved of duty, Onada emptied the bullets uh, from his rifle and he turned his weapon in Think about this. For him, the war was finally over yeah. after 29 long years, and he finally returned home to a hero's welcome. Now, I tell that story to say this. Think about it. For nearly three decades, Lieutenant Onada was engaged. Are you ready for this, Dr. House? He was engaged in a war that existed only in his now mind. think about that against an imaginary enemy that he both feared and distrusted. Yep. Think about that. Why did I tell that story in this book, Captured by Grace? Because this is exactly how many people relate to God. This is the drum that you've been beating for over 40 years. They are opposed to God in their minds. They think God is gunning for them on account of their sin. They have not heard that there has been a cessation of hostilities. They have not heard that the war has already been fought. And by the way, it's already been won. And the Prince of Peace now sits on the throne. And so ignorant of the good news, what do they do? They stay fearful of God and they spend their lives laying low in the jungles of religion. Think about That's it. That's what this is about. Yeah. The jungles of religion that we hide out in. 
And so to answer your question quickly, because I know we're running out of time, we hadn't even got into it, uh, but I wrote Captured by Grace because that's why you asked me, what did you write the book for? I wrote it for one simple reason. This is shocking, but you better hear me. Most people have not heard the good news. That's true. They don't know what the news is and they don't know what makes it so good. How do I know? Because most are unsure of who God is. Most are unsure of what God believes true about them, what God's already convinced of about them. Or maybe they've heard the good news, but here's something I've realized, but they don't believe it because it just does not fit in their grid. They think it's too good. It's nearly too good. It's too good yeah. to be true. So what do they do? They live their lives. This is key because I think we want to talk about it, but they live their lives under lies refusing to come home. And sadly, Dr. Lynn, this is just as true. I'm going to say it. It is just as true for Christians. Yes, sir. <clears throat> as it is for unbelievers. Yeah. It's time for the world to know, man, the war is over. It's time to live, man. Yeah. Hear the sound of the, of the party at home. Come on home. And, uh, and, and I'm telling you, I, I, I've never been more convinced. You can be free from fear and you can really live. Yes, sir. I believe that what happens is people need to realize that God is for them. Yes. He's not against them. Say he it. made peace through the blood of his cross. And the gospel really is almost too good to be true. Sometimes I ride down the road, Pastor Ben, with a sneaking grin on my face like, <laughs> This is too good to be true, but it is. And you know, uh, you know, you, 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 when you start to, to declare it, I think of the years that I've declared it, and people would say, basically, like they did with this general, that's propaganda. Yeah, that, that that's probably coming from the enemy. You know, there's some. There, there's sometimes I think sometimes people. I have been had people say about us because we preach the gospel of grace and the good news and the and the free gift of righteousness as if. Uh, you know, uh, as if we're the enemy. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like it, it's like uh, they, you know, bad news sells. That's right. You know, it's like you know what you can you you talk bad news, you can manipulate and control people. And I think one of the reasons why you got a lot of folks who don't want to let go of that is because they use fear to manipulate and control people. But if they ever get a hold of the gospel of grace. They'll do what they do, not because they have to, but because they start to fall head over heels in love with Jesus again, you know. <laughs> wow. And so I, I really, you know, this. I think this is a powerful book that, you know, people need to get their hands on. We're going to have some information on the screen where they can get this book. But we've got a couple for, more minutes before I, you know, kind of sign off. So just anything else you want to share with that as we come to the close of this one and then... They'll give me a minute or so to say something, but I think we've got three or four or five minutes left, something like that. Well, you know, if I, if I, could, just, if, if I could just give uh, maybe a thought, uh, you know, as, 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 as I look at, uh, at uh, the close of, of, that, of that first chapter, and, and, uh, and, and I simply said this. I said, for many years, I taught thousands of points but in much of that time, I missed the main point. Think about that. The point is Jesus. Yeah. Uh, he's the one who has given us exactly what you're saying. He's given us a new status as cherished children of God. He's the one who's paid the price to set us free. He's the one who invites us back to his love all day, every day. Before we die, there will always be a struggle, but too often it's the wrong struggle. Yeah. For a long time, I struggled to be good enough to earn God's approval, but now it's very different. It's the struggle to think right thoughts yes, sir. about God's grace so that he can change me now from the inside out. The writer of Hebrews says that we labor to enter God's rest. And this is a word for somebody today listening. So the only struggle is to stop struggling because the war is over yep. and he is the victor. I have been captured by grace 
and I hope you are too. Some of you that are wrestling right now and tired and worn out and frustrated, let me tell you something. Hebrew says, our only wrestle is to stop wrestling. Yeah. Our only labor yeah. is to stop laboring yeah. and enter rest. Yes, sir. You know, I while you were saying that, I was thinking of the scripture where he says labor to enter into rest. And I used to think yeah. that meant if you work real hard and get the work done, then you can rest later. You know, like, <laughs> and like, we, so we just work, 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 work. But, you know, they asked Jesus one day, what must we do to work the works of God? There's and only one thing that, he said. He said, he said simply believe. believe. That's the only work of the new. Covenant. That's our work, and that's the fight of faith. That so is, you know, because you know, and, and you know what? Every I'm not, day the fight is, and you have a choice. Yeah. What are you gonna believe? Yeah, and, and the fight is not for you know, at least for me. Like you know, it's, I'm not fighting to believe God for my car payment, and Come I mean, on. I know that those are very valid things to believe for. But what pe most people have a fight believing is. What God said about them there is true. There it is. There it is. That they are truly the righteousness of God. They are truly accepted in the beloved. And we've got just a couple of minutes, but I want to say this. But you know, the Song of Solomon, when he begins to court this Shulamite woman, which is a picture of the bride of Christ, when he first pursues her, her 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 view of herself is so polluted. Yep. She says, "Why would the king be interested in me?" She said, "I'm as black as the curtains of Kedar." And she says, my mother's children were angry with me. They made me keepers of the vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. What she's simply saying is, I'm not palace material. And she argues with it. She argues with it. Back and forth. Yeah, she says, I'm not palace material. She said, I'm just not palace material. My, the sun is looked upon. In other words, I'm a working hand. I'm a field girl. I'm not palace material. I've worked in the fields. My children, my mother's children made me you know, work in the field. And so she said, I'm not palace material. But he looks at her and he says, thou art all fair, my love, my dove. There is no spot in thee. And uh, he keeps arguing. on telling her Stop that. Stop arguing with him yeah, and believe it. Until she believes it. <laughs> well, we're about out of time. We're going to have Pastor Ben wow. on again next week. You want wow. to join us at the same time. But if you'd like to sow seed into this ministry to help us to take this kind of a message around the world, take a moment to take your phone and scan that uh, QR code that's on the screen. And uh, it will take you to a direct link where you can give via PayPal or credit card. You can become a monthly partner with Come us on. there and set up for a monthly deb debit if you'd like to. Uh, you could give via a, uh, a, a credit card by calling the number on the screen, and someone will take your call. If you don't get an answer, they'll call you back, leave your number there also. Or you can write a check or money order to the number that will come up on the screen and uh, uh, then send that to us. And we, we appreciate you doing that. And uh, we just want to thank you, Pastor Ben, for having us on thank and you, uh, you know I, I really thank the Lord that there are voices now that are really wow. starting to share the gospel all over the world and so uh, you know for that I, I applaud your boldness and I applaud those that want to jump in and help us to take the gospel literally around the world God bless I am excited to announce the release of my latest book titled the great I am in this book we will explore the seven times in the gospel of John that Jesus says I am when he uses that phrase, it is always in contrast to something from the Old Covenant. For instance, they thought Moses and the law was the door into the sheepfold, but Jesus said to them, I am the door. They thought that Israel was the true vine, but Jesus said to them, I am the vine, you are the branches. As you read the pages of this book, you will discover that Jesus removed the covenant of death and replaced it with the covenant of life. Get your copy of the book, The Great I Am, today.